every Sunday, the place to be is Worship Harvest Nalia. It's for you. Who loves the progi? Now we I got a vibe. Join us for our in-person service here at Worship Harvest Nalia. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Your kids will love it too. Come have fun with us. It's a space to build your faith, hang out, and make new friends. We are looking forward to seeing you next Sunday at Worship Harvest Nalia, 9 a.m. Enjoy your week. Victory live album is out now. You can listen to this uplifting music on Spotify, Apple Music, and many streaming platforms. excited to have you why don't you get up on your feet and let us worship our God together this morning amen, amen. come on
Because of Jesus, why don't you make a shout and a praise? Our God is good, our God is gracious, our God is wonderful. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Why don't you help me appreciate the worship team and the band for being with us this cold morning. Now guys, it's cold, but we're going to make it ourselves warm, right? So make a loud shout. Let me hear the noise of a victorious people, a people with a new ID. Thank you so much why don't you take your seats and as you do that help me welcome your neighbor make them feel special make them feel warm give them a hug if you came with them just tell them you're very very welcome online at the hosting center at our location we are so thrilled you've joined us this morning if you're listening to me you are so welcome if you are watching online right now i know there are guests the hosts they are making you feel warm and specially welcome thank you so much for being with us this morning worship harvest are you excited about business garage this morning hey. oh yeah only the people who want to go to the next level wake up this early and come to church yeah only the people who are going to the next level are online right now and they are sharing the link are you sharing the link come on go ahead and share the link let everyone know that we have started put it on your status so that no one misses the conversation we're about to have this morning my name is florence i'm very honored to be your service host and in a very special way i want to recognize a special group of people if you're watching business garage for the very first time very first time you stumbled on the link someone told you about it someone narrated the whole thing at your office and you say this Sunday I must tune in I want to recognize you in a very special way and our hosts online want to welcome you our guest experience in the house want to welcome you so why don't you go ahead and put up your hand if you're here in the house or at a location or if you're online just type and say I'm watching for the first time all the way from Kenya from Nairobi from UK from wherever you're watching from and we'll make you feel specially welcome first time guests any first time guests okay you're here for business guide for the very first time i see new faces oh yes online you are very welcome thank you so much for being here and at a hosting center at a location thank you so much for being with us this morning to catch business garage on such a cold morning trust me everything we are going to have this morning the conversation everything we're going to learn is going to be totally totally worth it yes amen amen, amen. now let's tell our first time guests who we are as we welcome as we remind ourselves who are we we are a movement of the gospel discipleship and mission and we are committed to the sole purpose of catalyzing spiritual social and economic renewal in our immediate communities and as a result the world and we believe that church begins on monday and sunday is garage time pp welcome to the garage we are here to equip you to run the best kingdom business we know you're already up and about running trying this and the other what we want to do this morning is to quicken the process of your business going to the next level why because when your business gets better our families get better our nation gets better our economies get better so tune in and share the link with another business leader or someone who plans to get into business so they can be equipped this morning with the 
best kingdom principles. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now we're going to continue worshiping God, this time with our substance, with our tithes, and with our offerings. And the guest experience team is going to be coming around with the bags wherever you are. If you're at a location, just feel free to put in your tithe and your offering while dancing and celebrating because God has been so good to us. And if you're watching online or listening to me, you can also return your tithe and your offering using these numbers. The numbers are 778 618 418 and the answer number is 758 618 418 if you'd like to use any of our pay codes you can use mtn momo pay the code is 148722 and the airtel code is 1160032 if you're online overseas you can still go ahead and send your your tithe and your offering using the website just type in your browser worshipharvest.org forward slash give and as we give and worship God with our substance, our worship team and a band have a special for us. So why don't you help me make them feel welcome one more time? So, Come on, guys. Thank you, Flora. We've gotten to learn over time that God loves us. Not because we are lovely, but because he is love. So we are here to sing about that love that is reckless, that is relentless, that does not end. As we celebrate that together.
Thrive, the business leader's breakfast series. Whereas you create so much value, you can only capture a fraction of the value because of the power of the supplier and because of the buyer power this side, but also rivalry and the power of substitution. There is a process to building winning. You don't end up with the winning team by accident. You don't wake up one day, you get to office and you witness something like that. I think John Maxwell said you either train them or you trade them. You either train them or trade them. What I have learned is to grow in the five levels of leadership and to become a people developer. So what I'm going to do is continue developing people, become a coach and train my people so that my business can thrive and grow. What I'm going to implement is um, I've been meeting my team weekly, but uh, according to Upmo, the, the chances of succeeding when we are not meeting regularly, actually minimal. So we're going to regularize it, maybe meet uh, twice a week. So what have, one of the things I've learned in this section is one, leadership. I'm able to, like the skills of right now, before this session, I didn't know how to equip my what, my team, or recruit people in the right places. And two, work on myself as an individual to be able to really learn more, read more, expand my knowledge. And one, to have a bigger vision. Articulate the vision. My take home from the Thrive Business Breakfast Session 3 is that if I as a leader do not have clarity about where I want us to go, I will fail to build a good winning team. As a leader, it's my responsibility to build a winning team. If I don't know where the company is going, I am limited at the people that I'm building. Come on, help me celebrate the Business Garage team, the School of Practical Business for organizing Thrive Business Conference. You can do better than that for sure. Oh yeah, yes, yes, they've done an incredible job. The last maybe three weeks now, equipping us and strengthening foundations for our businesses. Why don't you help me welcome the people who have just joined us right now, they are right on time. Come on, people, help me welcome the online team, the online audience, the radio audience, and the locations and hosting centers that are joining us this morning. Make a loud shout for all of them. Let them know what they are missing here in the house. Come on, people, I can't hear you. Oh, yeah, you are very welcome. You are right on time. So if you stumbled on the link or received it from somebody, do me a favor, share it with another person so they can know that the most critical part of this today is, has started right now. So we are going to engage in a very critical conversation that no business leader should meet, miss absolutely at all. My name is Florence. Once again, I'm very honored to be your host this morning. Thank you so much for choosing to be here. The past couple of Sundays, we've been equipping ourselves, knowing what different entities facilitate that government, a key stakeholder in our businesses, has set up for our benefit as business leaders that we might not even know about. And we've had different people come here to engage with us, Uganda Revenue Authority, Enterprise Uganda, Uganda Bureau of Standards, right, UNBS, they've been here. And I hope that every single time you've been watching, you've been making a step towards everything we have been learning to help your business go to the next level or even become bigger and better, right? Because one of the things we got from UNBS, UNBS last Sunday was that if you want to go to, from Jerusalem to Judea to Samaria to the ends of the earth, you have to register your business and also be able to meet certain standards so that we are not shocked when we are trying to export, we don't have any shocks, but we are well aligned for where we want to go. So yet again this morning, we have a very critical conversation with a very special guest that I want you to help make welcome this morning. We have the Registrar General. Come on, people. Yes, if you know what I mean, make a loud shout. We have the Registrar General from URSB. She's here with us, Registrar General. I, I, I don't want to call her name. She, she likes to be called by her name, but I don't think I'm, I, I'm worthy to even say that. So I'm going to stick to Registrar General this morning. So thank you so much for choosing to be with us this morning. I know you're very busy, but you've made the time to be here with us. Studio audience, you're the ones I see, you're the ones who are with me. Help me specially welcome her for being here with us. You are very welcome. 
Thank you very much. Pastor yes, so Paul. here at Business Garage, we introduce ourselves, we send greetings. I know you have family members and friends, assessment group members who are watching. <laughs> Why don't you help me introduce yourself and send greetings to all your loved ones who are watching us this morning? Thank you, uh, Pastor Flo. Mm. I'm happy and honored to be here. And you said I'm very busy. Mm. Yes, we cannot be too busy to do our work, all the work of God. <laughs> so I'm privileged to be here. My name is Masi Kinowisho, mm. and I serve my country as uh, the Registrar General mm. and official receiver of uh, Uganda Registration Services Bureau. And uh, you, did you ask me to send my greetings? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, of course, I send mm. greetings to the uh, person that takes care of me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, of course, my children who should be watching now and um, my workmates at Uganda Registration Services Bureau mm -hmm. and, of course, uh, my HI classmates, <laughs> especially the Soaring Eagles. <laughs> soaring thank Eagles, you. we send you greetings. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm. Anything more? Well, that's it. If you have any more, we, we are happy to hear it. That's me. That's you. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. So we are here for the sole purpose of knowing what URSB is about. You know, there's so many business leaders here in the house. You're being watched right now at 57 other locations, yeah? You're on, online, you're on radio, and there's so many business leaders who are listening in or watching us this morning, and they want to know. Some of these things, we just see the logos and what, but we don't know how are they connected to the business I'm running right now. So would you, in, in, briefly, because we don't have the whole day, tell us about URSB. Indeed, uh, Pastor Flo, you don't have a whole day because <laughs> your SV can take a year to break down. But I'm so happy to summarize the services that we offer to this nation and other nations. Mm. We are a government agency uh, that uh, was initially or formally under the Ministry of Justice as a government department mm. and were formed by an act of parliament, the Uganda Registration Services Bureau Act, CAP 210. Mm. Uh, but we came, became fully autonomous in 2010, 2011. What did we do? Yeah. We register almost everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we maintain registers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as we register, we collect uh, uh, non-tax revenue on behalf of uh, uh, Uganda Revenue Authority as mandated under the Stamps uh, uh, Duty Act. Uh, if you may allow me to break down the services that we offer. Mm. At Uganda Registration Services Bureau, uh, because we are called Registration Services Bureau, it means that we register. Mm. And you may be wondering what we register. In terms of business registration, we do register every business that is uh, operating out there or is yet to operate. And these are businesses which are local and uh, foreign or international. Mm. And uh, of course, under the business registration component, we register companies mm. under the Companies Act of 2012. And uh, under companies, we also have different types of companies. We have mm. single member companies. You as an individual can register a company and this was a legal reform of 20, um, 2012. And uh, we register foreign companies, we register public companies, yeah. we register non-profit making companies. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is the component of company registration. Then under STEM, the same component of business registration, we register business names under the business name registrations law. And uh, uh, if you are a sole proprietor, you do not want to become a corporate entity, you can just do a simple yeah. registration, which yeah. is for 24,000. Mm. Uh, let's say Pastor Flo, are trading as flow agencies. Come on, people. Yeah, Last so time, flow jeans, flow <laughs> agencies. So, so you register as, as simple as that. Yeah. Um, we also register partnerships under the Partnerships Act of uh, 2010, yeah. uh, still under the business comp registration component. Then we have legal documents that we register, which are agreements, yeah. contracts, mm. or everything that is signed and witnessed is registrable, mm. including trust deeds. Yeah. All these are registered. We have as old uh, businesses as old as 19, uh, 1910 wow. on our records, mm. 1907, yes. And they're in this country. And in this, they are in this country, and we yeah. have them on our database. Mm. Uh, that is the business registration component. And of course, we also handle insolvency. 
when companies fail, how do you close them after you have made all interventions? Uh, we have that component of insolvency, and insolvency is a state where a company can not pay its debts when they fall due. Mm -hmm. And that uh, uh, corporate insolvency applies to co uh, companies, but bankruptcy applies to individuals when you're unable to pay your debts. Uh, but we've been trying to promote business rescue uh, um, interventions under the business component. Yeah. And when it comes to intellectual property, that's also a service that we offer. Yeah. And intellectual property relates to the works of a human a mind, creative works of a mm -hmm. human mind. Mm -hmm. And we have industrial property and copyright. And then industrial property, we have the trademarks registration, yeah. which protects any symbol of trade. It may be a scent, it may be mm. a slogan, it may be a word, it may yeah. be an appearance, and it is protected under the Trademarks Act. So no one can use yes, it. Yes, no one can use it. Mm. Use it. And the Trademarks Act of 20, is of 2010, and the registrations they are under. Then if you want to register a design, for example, a design, an ornamental beauty, and a bottle shape, mm. a packaging material, mm. Mm. Uh, like a bottle shape, yeah. um, uh, a handbag or fashion and design, yeah. all that is registered under the industrial property law of 2014. Mm. And the same industrial property uh, act of 2014 uh, protects patents. Patents, these are works that are new in nature that um, are applicable, applicable to resolve yeah. uh, challenges, especially scientific and technological challenges. So patents are also registered mm. under that act. And we have utility models, we have uh, technovations uh, under that law. We also have a law that uh, registers geographical indications, yeah. which are products that are attributed to the locality of a place. Let's say if it's Uganda coffee, or vanilla, yeah. or cotton, or whatever product that is attributed to the locality, mm. or the environment, or the soils and the climates of that place, like potatoes from Kabale, vanilla from Mokono, coffee from Renzori, all that is protected under mm. the Geographical Indications Law of mm. 2013. Yeah. We have the traditional knowledge assets, which are cultural assets. It may be traditional music, awesome. assets, traditional medicine, mm. traditional song, yeah. traditional tires, yeah. traditional, uh, you know, baskets mm. and all those beautifications around the traditional element. Let's say that in the Buganda, this is a Buganda culture wear ah, or Buganda dance or Ankole or, or Busoga. There's also an arrangement to protect traditional knowledge under the law and we are actually formulating a sui generi law that is going to even enhance that. Mm. We have, uh, under the same intellectual property law, we have uh, uh, patents, I mean, and I've already mentioned patents, we have copyright. Yeah. Copyright is almost the broadest yes. uh, sense of protection uh, in terms of intellectual property law and protects copyright and, and neighboring rights. Mm. And this is protected under the copyright law of 2006. And it protects scientific, artistic, and literary works, basically almost everything under intellectual property. Yeah. That's the second component that we register. Then we have civil registrations, which protects, protects civil marriages under the civil uh, registration arrangements, under the Marriages Act. And um, uh, we know that we have five legal types of marriages in Uganda. And uh, that component of registration protects the civil marriages, and civil marriages that are in Kampala are registered with the Registrar General, that is URSB, mm. and marriages outside Kampala are registered by the COWOS, yeah. Chief Administration uh, Legislative Officers. And, and of course, under the civil marriages component, we have the different categories of marriages. Those are the civil marriages, we have the church marriages, we have the customary marriages, mm. we have the Hindu marriages, and Islamic marriages. So you have to be married under the five categories. If you're not, then you're not <laughs> properly married. Yeah. You're just cohabiting or uh, enjoying the fun of somebody, mm. which is illegal. Mm. Um, <laughs> yes. Then, of course, under the civil marriages component, we also license places of worship yes. to conduct, uh, to celebrate Wait. marriages. Yes. And I'm happy Worship Harvest is licensed to conduct uh, oh, yeah. marriages. Yeah. Mm. Uh, there are so many churches out there that conduct marriages and They're are not, not licensed. Either. And if you get married in any church that is not licensed, then your marriage is no, null and nice. void. It does not exist. Uh, we also off or issue special licenses for those that would want to marry outside the arrangement of the church or the civil registries offices. Mm. You want to marry, you get married at the beach, you want yes. to celebrate your marriage at the beach mm. or any or on and the ocean wedding. or wherever. Mm. 
that is, so we issue those, that special license as well. But we also have an important role that we play, that if you want to get married abroad and you're single, the government abroad will ask for a single status letter. Yeah. So we also issue single status letters to prove, that, to prove that you have not been married before, or if you have been married, or your marriage has been nullified, or it is or by divorce decree, and you're single. Mm -hmm. So we issue uh, that uh, certificate. Uh, we also handle uh, the collateral registry, which is uh, the security interest in movable property, mm -hmm. which allows you to uh, pledge any movable property mm -hmm. In, into the banks or commercial institutions to get a loan yeah. as opposed to the traditional uh, approach of uh, uh, submitting a land title. Not yeah. everybody owns land. And under the, the, that chattel's arrangement, you can pledge your phone, uh, yeah. your, uh, your car, your laptop, your watch, your jewelry, uh, your plants, your crops. You don't have to and own land as long as, 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 long as, as, long as you, you have evidence that that is yours mm. and it, is, it has been valued. Mm. So we register a lot, yeah. uh, over 60 services that we offer yeah. under the 17 Acts of Parliament that we implement yes. and 21 implementing regulations. I must say that under the Government Infrastructure, Uganda Registration Services Bureau yeah. is the biggest entity of the government mm. that uh, m administers as many laws yeah. and as many services as you've had. Yeah. We are like 60 different units mm -hmm. or organizations mm -hmm. in one yeah. organization. Thank you. Wow. Help me appreciate the Registrar General. I can imagine how much work that is. And I recently saw in the new vision that you have when they were celebrating you, that you have over 310 staff members under your team, yes. on your team. Yes. Wow, that must be quite some work. So those are many things that you do, but we want to lean into maybe four of them that are most applicable in this context. Uh, business registration, intellectual property, collateral registry, and insolvency, when businesses want to declare bankruptcy. So let's get into the first one that people um, are most familiar with, but also have not followed through on business registration. Why don't you take us through the process of business registration and why it's important for every business to be registered? Okay. Thank you, Pastor Flo. Business registration is very critical because if you're not registered, mm. you're not known anywhere yeah. in the books of the country, but also by your peers. And there's a risk of uh, failing to sustain your business or continuity or access to financial accommodation or trading across borders and transacting among others. So it is very important for you to register your business. Mm. And you can, when you have a business or a business idea, mm. many people come up with names. Some of you dream of names, others want to create names out of your grandparents' words, your coin <laughs> words. There's so much niceties on creation of names. Yeah. And not every business that you see on the street or with a label yeah. is registered because our records show less than one million registered businesses in Uganda. We have actually 800, we have 800,000 registered businesses in Uganda. No. Out on our records. And, and that shows uh, that Ugandans do not register or do not embrace oh, not the formalization yeah. agenda. And when you look at the population of Uganda, let's say approximately 43 million. And the businesses around your, your localities, mm -hmm. take a census, business census around Nalia, or Entebbe, or Chiwatule, or Chanja, or Bulindo, mm -hmm. or wherever, Makindye. There are so many businesses outside Kampala. So it is estimated about 10 million businesses are being run in this country. Wow. But only 800,000 are registered. And I wish URA could tell you even those out of the 800, thousand registered businesses, the ones that pay tax. So it's, it's, it's very disappointing. And yeah. we've been trying to promote the formalization agenda. Wow. Because when you register, it's for your own benefit. Mm. And the government cannot plan for you when you're not known. It's like now we have national IDs, you have either passport, yeah. you have an identifier as an individual. Pastor Flo, if somebody tells you, identify yourself, mm. you present your passport, your national ID, yes. or your birth certificate, yeah or an LC letter, mm. at least there's something about you. Yeah. But if somebody told you, uh, please, or asked you, can you, well, introduce what your business is, you'll have a business card or a website, but the business is not registered mm. and not known anywhere. Yeah. And it is very easy to register business. 
And I've benefited, of course, even uh, I'm, a, I'm a nature, I'm a Harvest Institute mm. for, uh, student for, for this uh, year. And uh, I've seen, uh, especially when we encourage to write books, mm. to uh, read books, to submit our synopsis mm. and uh, uh, many, many requirements. And of course, after reading Pastor Moore's book, the straightforward book, it is important that we also add a component and a meaning HI mm. of uh, registering a business, starting a business as one of the products as, uh, in, in addition mm. to a book. Mm. And maybe that will help us to have as many businesses registered as possible yeah. because the HI is contributing to, for example, the copyright industry, the literary works. Yes. Every student takes out a book. Yeah. And I wish, how I wish that Worship Harvest or Harvest Institute knew what contribution they were making to this nation. Mm. They could be the ones leading in yeah. stimulating mm. intellectual outputs, intellectual products, yeah. knowledge products, yeah. out of the people that go through their courses. So how do we register business in Uganda? You have to have a name. And a name is uh, created by you, yeah. you can create any name. Yeah. You either dream of a name, <laughs> uh, either you, you want to use the brim name, you want to <laughs> use whatever name, as long as it is not against public order yeah. and morality. Oh, okay. That part. Yes, mm -hmm. and morality. We've had names <laughs> that have been presented to us as registrars, <laughs> and you look at it and you're like, I don't want to mention even some of the names on this no, forum. No, no, I don't mean, mention. <laughs> and, and you see that they are really insulting mm. uh, people and, and <laughs> nature and God and so on. So you have to come up with a name that is really um, uh, acceptable. And we are the ones actually to advise that this name is acceptable. So mm. you come up with a list of three names. Mm. We take them through a procedure yeah. of um, examination. Yeah. And uh, uh, the examination of a name is to assess its registrability mm. and the registrability is determined by the Companies Act mm. and if in the judgment of the registrar uh, the name is not acceptable will tell you that it is rejected mm. you can get another name so when you sell through that name a company name reservation component mm. and you have a name reserved a name is reserved for 30 days under the law mm. and this is to enable you to organize yourself look for resources to register. And a company is as, as affordable as uh, 150,000 mm. registration fees if it has a share, minimal share of capital of one million. Yeah. And every share capital means a bit of um, a, a difference in stamp duty and registration fee, which is not a lot. Yeah. Uh, of course, after you have um, gotten the name, we advise you to uh, fill forms. They are memorandum and articles of association, which um, uh, simple forms to fill, or you have an option to even submit a detailed document of a memorandum and articles of association, which spells out, which spells out the name of the company, the uh, shareholders in that company, the uh, share capital, the objectives of the company, and uh, the uh, rest is the address, yeah. basically. And when you submit the documents, Actually, you're required even to do a self-assessment because everything has been digitized. You go online, feed in the share capital, and then you have an oh, assessment, yeah. which is actually a bank, a bank payment form. Mm. Because all we collect, we are commercial agents of the state, yeah. and we collect revenues on behalf of the government. You, of government. Yeah. Uh, so uh, once you have the bank slip, you pay in the bank, mm. either digitally mm. or through mobile money yeah. or or physically, depending on your comfort or what is convenient for you. Yeah. And once you have submitted all documents, the Mamana Mandatical Association, mm. there's a company mm. form that requires your picture, uh, your, your passport photo, mm. or the members' passport photos, yeah. and also spells out the name and the address. We also require the national ID if you're a Ugandan, or a passport if you're not a Ugandan. Uh, and, and the form for showing the location of your business yeah. because it's very critical. If you're a business planter, we need to know uh, the, 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 bus the business location. Mm. We also need to know the directors of the business. Yeah. And you submit those documents and you get your company registered in three hours. In three in hours? In three hours. In three good hours, wow. as long as you have submitted all the documents. Mm. If you have not submitted all the documents, you'll be asked to submit, you'll be asked to make changes mm. until you comply. Yeah. 
And so that's the process. Yeah. Just a matter of name reservation, submission of requisite documents, payment, payment. of uh, stamp duty and registration fee, which is um, minimal, and then you get a certificate of registration. Yes. Mm. And then, of course, we have the after registration services. Yes. So what after registration? Yeah. Uh, it is important that uh, when you register, you know which field you're in. If you're registering at school, for example, uh, we have uh, an e uh, e electronic businesses licensing portal. Uh, it's on our website when you check on it, uh, when you check it, and it, it shows you the different licenses that you require in every sector. If it's the education sector, you know where to get the uh, uh, relevant licenses. Mm -hmm. If it, you're in the health sector, whatever sector you're in, you have to check on that website that leads you to what next in the field that you have yeah. to get a trading license for example if you're in the local government you have to get also the local trading license from yeah. the local uh, government if you're in, in the cities you get from the cities uh, the trading licenses and you start operating mm. you also are required to start open an account because you're not opening a business just for show yeah. or for keeps so it is always important that you open a business account uh, and you can open in any bank of your choice in any bank of your choice. And when uh, we are in HIN and they're asking about revenue streams and what, mm. all this comes in handy. Yeah. And so our, our registration uh, uh, is not complete if you don't have a bank account and if it's not operational. Basically, that's what I can say on business registry, mm. on company registration. Then there's the other component of business name registration. Maybe I should emphasize that for business registration, it also depends on what you want to do. Yeah. There's the business company, companies limited by guarantee. That, those are non-profit making, like uh, churches, faith-based organizations, mm. uh, associations, uh, OBs groups, OGs groups, so many uh, entities that are registered are non-profit mm. making. Then mm. there are also companies limited by shares, which are private in nature and profit making. There are also public companies, which are listed on the stock exchange, yeah. and the single member companies as well, where you just opt to register as a single person, uh, as opposed to the two, because the law before 2012 required that any two people yeah. can register, any two or more people can register business in yes. Uganda. Mm. But the law has amended to provide for any one or more people can register in Uganda. And another category of businesses is the foreign, reg foreign registrations, foreign mm. companies. The companies that are operating outside Uganda and elect to register here as a branch, mm. they are registered as foreign companies. And if you are a foreign company out there and you are operating, you're required to register. The law mandates you to register. Yeah. Whether you are a shareholder in a, a local company, as a company, as a foreign company, or you're coming in just as a branch, yeah. you are, you're required to register. to register. So those are the categories of business, of, of companies. Then for business names, a business name is a simple uh, uh, registration mm. where you want to trade uh, you have a duka, a, more, a, a shop, a unit, you can decide to register it as a company, but if you want to start small, you can register as a business name. It is only 24,000, you just fill wow. a business name registration form, mm. as simple as that, and you get it within one or two hours mm. of uh, application. And this can come to your email, or you can pick it physically from our regional, from our headquarters, or our regional establishments mm. as well. Yeah. We also have partnerships which are registered under the Partnership Act of 2010. And here, a partnership is you make an application for registration of a business name, but if you're more than one, you enter a partnership deed to do a business, yeah. and that partnership deed is also registered, yeah. and you register it as a partnership under the Partnership Act, but you will have also registered a business name under the Business Names Act. A special partnerships apply to mm -hmm. two or more people that would not want to register a company, or um, and uh, want to register mm. just uh, as, a, as partnerships, uh, or as the limited liability company, uh, partnerships, mm. or just a partnership uh, uh, deed. Yeah. So as far as businesses are concerned, that is it. But there are also documents that support businesses. Yeah. For example, if you want to operate on behalf of, the biz of a business, you don't, don't just wake up and you start operating on behalf of a business, of a company, mm -hmm. especially when you're more shareholders, yeah. you have to be given authorization. To do that. And there is what we call a power of attorney, mm. authorizing you to act on behalf of the company. Yeah. If you want to bid for business, you need a power of attorney. If you want to buy land, actually, you also need a company resolution. Yeah. Every decision of a company, of a registered company, is done by a company resolution, which is a company resolution is a document taken out of a business meeting that you have sat in a meeting today and resolved to buy land, mm. to buy a car, to uh, recruit people, to, I mean, to put policies in place. 
so that it is formal, everything is documented. Tomorrow you appear somewhere or in the courts of judicature yeah. and they'll ask you, who authorized you to operate on, on behalf, behalf of, of a company? Of a company? Mm. Or where's the resolution that authorized you to buy, especially when you have a smart person that is contesting your case? So be alert, all this documentation must be registered mm. with URSB. Mm. And there are also mergers and acquisitions, yeah. especially when you have a business and you feel that you want to work together you feel that you can synergize and yeah. come up with one business. Mm -hmm. So you can go through a merger or amalgamation or where the business is not doing well, you can also acquire another business. You've seen it in the telecom mm. uh, area, in the telecom space, but also where we are now in an economic, you know, a not a good, so good economic uh, 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 situation. We, instead of even seizing your company or giving it up, and this is what we promote, one of the business rescue methodologies that we encourage is you can merge as yeah. companies, you can come together. You, you, they can take over, all companies can be taken over by another, it can, the company can be swallowed by mm -hmm. another company yeah. and it's allowed under the law. Thank you. Wow. That is the business <laughs> registration component. And I suspect we are likely going to stay with business registration today. This, <laughs> don't laugh. Because it's quite broad, mm. and one of the things that's really um, is raising alarms for me is to know the number of business people that are businesses that are registered mm. versus the number of businesses in this country. Yeah. That number is quite alarming, yeah. and I suspect it's because most of the people it's not that they are not complying, but it's because most of them are ignorant. Yes, is there a way? Because I'm hearing websites, online, documents, and I can imagine many people who are illiterate and most of those are running businesses down yes. there. Many of them. Yes. How, are we, how can we reach those people, this, those people with this information, which they're not going to come across. Some of them are not even watching Business Garage, but there are, there are so many, say, downtown. How can we get all those people? How, how are you able to help them? Because with all these legal terms, this legal thing, this is the How are you? How, how are you? <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Flo. Yes, we have different approaches yeah. in terms of uh, promoting the formalization of uh, the informal sector. And maybe I could even challenge the people viewing and the people that are here are you operating the formal sector or the informal sector? The informal sector yeah. is your business is running, but it's not known, it's not registered, mm. the documentation is not there, yeah. and nobody knows about it. And when you die, God forbid, you go with it. And then the formal sector is where your business is registered, it is on the record, it has a bank account, it's operating, and uh, it can be rescued any time yeah. it fails, or any time it wants to grow big or to expand, it can be respected. So, how do we get to the public? We have different categories of the public that mm. we get to. Of course, we have people that are in the cities, yeah. and or the information is concentrated here in the capital cities, but we have also stretched out to uh, open branch offices. We are in Arua, we are in Gulu, we are in Bale, we are in Masaka, we are in Barara. Very soon we are going to the Albertan region. But most important is that we are online. You can access us just online, Google URSB, and you'll see the applications. And we have digitized actually every document. We are fully aut um, automated. All our processes are automated, mm. and all our documents are digitized. And the messages that we have been putting there have been classified in a way that we use the ordinary methods of communication, uh, radio, TV, um, and such important platforms like Business Garage. We are honored to be hosted here, by the way. Yeah. And we thank you for that, uh, for honoring that. Um, and we put in the pub, 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 pub uh, uh, papers, but not everybody reads. Uh, we run campaigns in different kinds of languages. We have oh, uh, translated great. all our documents in, in, some, in, in about four languages, four mm, different languages. Mm. We have business, mobile business clinics oh, that great. if you decided that on a one Saturday or a one Sunday, you want worship harvest team or partners mm. to register. We will come and camp here and register instantly. We have come mobile vans. Come on. For mobile vans. I think that's a brilliant one. Yes. Mm. And you talked about Omuntuwa. Okay, let me say Omuntuwa Bilijo. Mm. Omuntuwa Bilijo, a person that is on the streets downtown, yeah. is one that makes a lot of money. And we have actually planted. Uh, places, uh, uh, our locations, mm -hmm. if I may use uh, the 
<laughs> worship harvest language yeah. in different spaces. We yeah. are in downtown Nachivubo or, oh, or we know we are at Posta Uganda, we are at uh, Georgian House, our headquarters, and very soon, mm. <clears throat> excuse me, we are moving to our facility in Kololo, Baskavi Road. Mm. The government of Uganda, through Uganda Registration Services Bureau, has built a six story facility that is going to do business facilitation mm. and uh, we'll have a one-stop shop and we'll have Uganda Revenue Authority, Uganda Investment Authority, yeah. we'll have Capital Markets Authority, we'll have all institutions that touch the business facilitation. Yeah. But I also wanted to say that we have one-stop centers. We have a one-stop center where you come in at Uganda Registration Services Bureau and register almost everything. You register after registration, you have a trading license, you, have, you check the land if you want to buy a land, you check uh, informa business information, you check everything, uh, you, you get uh, the local government contacts, you have uh, even nearer the National mm -hmm. Identification Authority, uh, Registration Authority, we have all key, about 13 ministries, departments and agencies that in are represented place. in mm -hmm. one place in the one-stop shop mm -hmm. operated by URSB for every client. Yeah. But also Uganda Re Investment Authority as a component of the one-stop shop, mm -hmm. where we also are there to register the investors that come to invest in this country as well. Yeah. So we are spread, we use all kinds of methodologies yeah. to reach out to people. Yeah. We have sung, yeah. we have danced, we have <laughs> played skits, we have done all. So we are saying, what next, what next, what next? We are next. Yes, so, yeah. and coming here mm. to speak to uh, people that uh, are, are highly valued, really, and also uh, Worship Harvest bringing this information to the uh, partners out there, to the viewers, is very important yeah. because not every space mm. is acceptable in, mm. in other faith-based organizations. Mm. And this is how you build a complete citizen that knows what to do mm. and knows where to go, yeah. especially in terms of uh, the business uh, uh, formalization right. and business uh, mm. uh, excellence. Right. Thank you. I think we're going to have to take up that offer they've just given us, yeah? to set up clinics here in Pastor Chris and just run a campaign on registering businesses because it's very critical. And I'm going to ask uh, RG to, tell, to take us through the, the benefits of that mm. shortly. But there's so many questions that are coming in already. And if you're online and you'd like to ask a question or here in the house, just let Pastor Chris know or post your question online and our hosts will be able to forward it to me here and I pass it on to the Registrar General. So how do I, someone is asking, how do I go about an incomplete registration that has taken years, but, biz but business name, names were reserved, yeah? Another person is asking if they're registered here in Uganda, yeah, they have a business name similar to another in Rwanda, and I want to go and set up in Rwanda, how am I protected? How does that happen? Okay. Um, the registration uh, that could have been, you know, people start processes of registration, and later they relax and do not complete. Mm. And like I mentioned, the law, the Companies Act requires you to reserve a company name. And the name is protected and reserved for 30 days. Yeah. But if you're interested in extending it and you're not ready to register within 30 days, there's another extension provided for by the law, another 30 days. So you can extend your res reservation and stretch it up to 60 days. But after 60 days, the law does not stretch further. Okay. And, but if you started on a business, uh, uh, on a business name reservation, you can still come to our office, we check what we have in our records. If nobody has ever taken up that name, we will reserve it okay. and we start afresh. Yeah. Yes. And there are also people who have abandoned businesses. If you started a business, you registered it. Mm -hmm. There's a component of uh, reviving it. So you just submit your annual returns, which is um, a, a statement of uh, the state of affairs of a company, yeah. who are the shareholders, who are the directors, what are the liabilities, every year. It summarizes the life of a company. Mm -hmm. When you submit that state of affairs document, which is called an annual return, we, you revive that company, even if you have taken uh, 10 or 20 years without uh, checking on it. Mm -hmm. It is still on record. Actually, people think that when they fail in business, you just close your duka and go. And go. <laughs> but on record, on the mm -hmm. government record, as long as you have registered, these companies the are running. there for the 100 days, 100 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. You find that company. Yeah. So it's up to you to revive it or to close it mm -hmm. formally yeah. under the law. Yeah. Um, so that person can come and uh, they, can, they don't have even to come. They can send a WhatsApp on 0712-448-448 mm -hmm. and 
we will respond to them. Come on now. Unless they want just to come to, mm. to our offices. Yeah, just, we can serve you when you're there. Yeah. But if you want, it's okay. But if you will, anyway, that's all. <laughs> so, you could say that number again so that our media team can capture it, is, it and share it. The, the WhatsApp line of URSP is mm. 0712. 448 448 strictly mm. whatsapp mm. whatsapp anything and you will be responded to yeah. by our pr team that is always on standby to yeah. attend to you mm. the second uh, question related to benefits right no 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 mm. somebody saying if they are registered in uganda can oh, they yes, go operate somewhere else? yes yes um a foreign company is not a company that has foreigners <laughs> many people think that a company that has foreigners is a foreign company under the law it's different so mm. two Chinese can start a local company under the Companies Act mm. and it's a local company it's not an international it's company. not an international <laughs> company so I've seen many people making noise out there these people are taking our businesses the, there's, the, there's abundance out there if you cannot take up the space other people will take it but back to the foreign registration I wanted to clarify that people think that when they are foreigners when foreigners are in a company, it's a foreign company. A foreign company under the law, the Companies Act 2012, mm. is that company that is registered outside Uganda but selects to do business here, here. and they are coming to open a branch office. Mm. So it's already incorporated in its country of origin. Yes. And when they come here, they submit all certified registration from their country of origin. And we don't incorporate, we register, we give them a certificate of registration yes. upon payment of a total of US dollars 550. Yes. So that's a foreign company. So if you are in Uganda and you seek to register a branch in, in, in Kenya or mm. Rwanda, that would be the same approach. Mm. You re, you'll be registered as a foreign entity. But if you, you, you're foreigners and you just come to Uganda and want to start a fresh new registration, mm. it's taken as a local company. Yes. Uh, so how do you protect the name, if especially you to go, if you want to go out? Mm. Registration of a company name does not give you the proprietary rights in a name. It gives you that identity. It's different from a trademark. If you have a brand name mm. of uh, water, if you have a brand name of a soft drink, if you had, uh, have a brand name of a computer uh, or a sound system, that nobody can use Dell, nobody can use Panasonic, nobody can use iPhone, Apple. nobody can use uh, Apple, nobody. It is strictly a proprietary right that to use it you have to seek a license. When it comes to business registration, yes, nobody can use your name, a name, as long as it is yours, but the law also provides that names can be similar, but mm. not confusingly similar. Mm. That is the test we use. In the, in the company. Mm. Names can be similar, but not mm. confusingly similar. Not iPhone and iPhone. Yes. The confusing similarity test mm. is Flow Agencies, mm. let's say Flow Agencies Limited. Flow is F L U, uh, F L O, and somebody wants to register F L O O. Uh -huh. So it is still the Excuse same. Even if you added just some it's small double. identifier, mm. and we use the test of an ordinary person on the street mm. or on a monomini bus. Mm. If they can tell that, if it can confuse them, then we cannot register. Mm. And so it is important that the name is not confusingly similar uh, to what is already registered. Mm. And when you want to register abroad, um, uh, you have to follow their laws. Every country has its own laws. Mm. That's the first thing. So the moment you cross over... Yes. You look at the... Yes. Because the doctrine of territoriality applies. Mm. Every territory has its own laws. Right. And you see what laws apply there mm. and you register. If you're lucky and that name is not registered in a country where you are, mm. where you're going to register, it's okay. Mm. Because for us, a registration test is the database that we have. Yes. The 800,000 entities that we have mm. are the ones that give us whether flow agencies is a name that we go through or not. We don't search other databases beyond Uganda. We don't, because that's what the law uh, provides. Yeah. So the person can register as long as the laws mm. uh, permit in of that space, land. In yes. the, of the land permit, then they can uh, protect uh, 
their names right. uh, accordingly. But we want to encourage people to be creative, mm. not to steal other people's names. Okay. Not to, we have that <laughs> challenge. Somebody sees Flow Angels is shining, yeah. and they want to also use Flow with a double O. Oh. Or, or double o. But you know, even what the other test that we use is, uh, yes, you can use the word, the visual, mm. the visual examination, yeah. that you see the F-O-L-O and the F-L-O-O, -O, but we also use the phonetic phonetic yes. examination. Mm. How does it sound yes. to the ordinary person? Especially on radio. Somebody saying flow agencies, flow right. agencies. You can't tell the difference. Mm. So we also subject that to a test. Right. It's a whole process. And we want our clients to bear with us. Mm. Many a times we reject names. You can even bring 10 names and we reject them for your own benefit. Mm. Because most of these have been registered. They're we not, want you to they're stand not acceptable. Out. Mm. And we want you to stand out. Mm. We don't want anyone to uh, um, uh, take your brand to, yes, to uh, and confuse it. Mm. yes, yes. There's what we call free riding. Mm. We have free riders in the market space, and they look for businesses that have excelled, and they want to <laughs> create their mm, businesses something. around that mm. space mm. or around that, mm, that branding. Thank mm. you. Right. Help me appreciate Registrar General for being here and educating us this morning so broadly. Yeah. Again, the responsibility is on us to go back and study more and equip ourselves even better. But before we go, our time is really, really fast spent, but in bullet form, would you tell our studio audience here and online why it's very critical for them to register their businesses? Bullet form at this, okay. this, this, this. Okay, it is very important to register a business because a business is a corporate body or an identifier, mm. and it helps you to access a market. Uh, beyond even Uganda. You cannot trade across borders, for example, under the Common Markets Protocol or under the East African Community Arrangement when you are not on the registers. Oh, yeah. Nobody can even take that risk. You cannot get a financial uh, support, let's say access to finance, like loans, uh, from a bank when you're not registered. You cannot grow your business or expand when you're not registered. And the business continuity is also mm -hmm. very uh, difficult mm -hmm. if you are not known. So how will your children or your grandchildren take on that business? Mm. And you remember Indians beat us in that space of business continuity, family businesses. If you're starting a family business, be fair to yourself. Register it. Because if you're starting a family business, you're not starting it for on, not only for yourself, but also for your children and the generations to come. Uh, the other important thing is that you can trade in a business name. You can uh, buy land, you can transfer actually when the business is even making money you can even, somebody can come to buy it from you, we have so many products and businesses that have been bought millions of dollars, you know we started this business with just one million yeah. and somebody is interested in that name it must be registered, somebody is interested in your business and you sell it, you can sell it uh, this business can also own land, it can transfer uh, shares, they can transfer any interest if it is re registered. If it's not registered, it's not known. Nobody will want to associate with you. So please be formal. The way you have an identification as an individual, the way you have an identification as a family, you should have an identification registered as mm, a business right. so that you're known right. for your business. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Registrar General. Thank you so much. A bigger hand clap and shout from the studio audience. People, business leaders, you've had it for yourself. Expansion, continuity, which is one of the things we really, really need to work on in this country. Continuity. Yeah, so if you want to see your gen businesses go to next generation, another generation, give it an identification. Yeah, register it. So it's very important that we do some of these things. And again, go and get the information for yourself because business is yours, right? Yeah, sure. Business is yours, so own it and do the due diligence. And if you talk to Pastor Chris very well, maybe you might have a clinic here and a school of practical business to just make sure we do a campaign of registering our businesses. Thank you so much for being with us here today. If you're online, if you're listening, thank you so much for joining us. We never want to close our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You've maybe been watching every single Sunday and you hear us saying this thing over and over. Today is a day for your salvation. So it's very simple. You just need to say this prayer after me. Just say, dear Jesus, I come to you today to give you my life and to receive the life that you died on the cross for me. So take my life today and do something significant with it. In Jesus' name.
Amen. If you've just said that short prayer, right now you have just become born again. And there's a number running online right now. Just go ahead and send a text to that number, letting the pastor behind the line know that you have just made a decision to follow Jesus. The number, if you're listening to me, is 0775-642-449. 0775-642-449. When you send a text to that number, somebody will be behind the line to attend to you and to pray with you. Otherwise, thank Thank you so much for always being with us every single Sunday morning. Be sure to join us next Sunday because we will have another critical conversation to equip ourselves here on this platform. You can even share the link with other people who have not caught the conversation so they can catch it as well and not miss out. And then we have the business lounge for all of us who are in the house and those who are at a location. We have a business lounge set up for us here at Worship Harvest Nella. We are very privileged. We're going to have the RG in the business lounge. Come on now. Yes. So we can have an extension of this conversation at a location where you are. I'm sure there's a community there that wants to carry out this conversation or to even help you if you've not registered and you want to know how do I go to the next step, step with this conversation. People in your location are able to help you. So just go ahead and do that. Thank you for being here. The encounter service is starting in a few minutes. Be sure to come back online and catch that as well. See you soon. Bye-bye.